Assalamu alaikum and this is Naila. I am joining you live from Atlanta, Georgia. As always, please let me know where you're located. And you know, I do come with my own set of questions, but as we go on, I'll be taking your questions. All right, so alaikum, Nicola. <clears throat> okay, so while people are joining in, I'm going to pull up my questions and remember that I want to know who I'm, who's with me today and where are you? Let me know where you are. We only have a few more days before Ramadan. So how is everyone getting ready? What are you doing? Are you ready? You know, people always think about Ramadan prep. <clears throat> One of the things that I say in regard to um, Ramadan is that it's not always really about, you know, preparing for Ramadan. Ramadan is actually a preparation for us. You know, we always think about it kind of like the other way around. Ramadan is the preparation. It's not necessarily something that we prepare for. It is to be used for us to be able to prepare for things in, in the future. So I see we have a few people here who are here with us live. Let me know where you are. And I am, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to take the first question. And how about that? It is in regard to Ramadan. All right. So the thought of fasting really long hours fills me with anxiety. How can I overcome that in order to have a successful Ramadan? You know, Ramadan, because we know it is supposed to be this time of growth. It actually, for some people, it gives them a lot of pressure because there are some things that you're supposed to do. There are some, there, there's some standards, there's some behaviors. There are even a lot of opportunities for additional worship. And you got to be able to fit it into your life. You have to be in the position and in the mindset just to be able to follow through. And knowing that can ooh, really put someone on edge. So I'm going to say, how do you overcome this anxiety? I want you to think about this like goal setting, like any other type of goal setting. Okay, so if you could break that down into steps, what is going to be your goal for the day? Is it going to be that my goal for Ramadan, I want to focus in on my fasting? Okay, let's do that. So what do you need to do in order to, what would be the first step? One of the first steps would probably be your support. All right, my goal for the, for the day is going to be doing, completing my support. All right, so... You do that. You go through your fasting through throughout the day. Well, right now, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I don't know where the rest of you are. That could be a pretty, pretty long window in regard to how long you're going to fast. So what do you do? How about we break this down into intervals? You know, I remember when my children were much younger, and in order to teach them how to fast, and they didn't have the obligation as of yet. But just to, you know, introduce the idea to them, what I would do is I would break it down into really small increments. And I would break it down to, okay, gonna, if you can just fast until 10 o'clock, let's just break it down until 10 o'clock. Or let's fast until lunchtime. And that would be what I would do for a child. And so what I'm going to suggest you do is break it down. Okay, I'm going to make it until the meeting at work. That's going to be my goal. And then when the meeting comes, all right, you know that you've got to make it to another point during the day. All right, we're going to break that down and make that into another goal. All right, I see where you've joined us. Please let us know where you are. And just break it down into small intervals throughout the day. Okay, and so just I want you to think of it as goal setting. And also, I'm never ever going to dismiss the power of du'a and what you can do in making du'a and asking Allah to to help to to give you get give you some comfort 
and some ease throughout the day. But let us be mindful that fasting is not meant to be easy. You know, that it is an act of worship and it is something that you do, feast of Belilah, but it's not supposed to be easy. I mean, it, it is it is a built-in mechanism that Allah gives us to be able to be, to be robust and to be, build um, the capacity for us to be able to control our nafs, you know, to control our desires. This is not going to necessarily be easy. And when we look at the Prophet and his companions, radiallahu anhu, you know, many of them, they struggle. You know, we, we know in regard to some of the hadiths, some of the hardships that they, they had while they were fasting. All right, so number two, as a revert living in the West, I find Ramadan is a lonely and isolating time. How can I overcome the sadness that I feel during this time? You know, as most of you know, I work with a lot of people who are married or who are in relationships. And that is something that I hear about a lot. Ramadan can be very lonely. Holidays can be very, very lonely. People usually think about families and they think about inviting another couple over, but a lot of times people will forget about the single folks. So I'm going to say to my families and to my married people, first thing I'm going to do is ask you not to forget about the single folks. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to address this question with this person. Okay, how can you overcome the, the sadness? You know, I want you to be mindful of what Ramadan is meant for. You know, when Allah wants to bring us closer to him, one of the things that I've noticed is that when he worked with any of the prophets, that when he was working with them and when he was bringing them closer to him, that they were always isolated. I want you to think about Eunice. I want you to think about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and him going into the cave, the cave. I want you to think about Job and, you know, how he lost all of his children and including his wife. And, you know, so when they were at one of their strongest and most difficult times, they were alone. And so sometimes Allah really does isolate us to be able to work with us. But uh, there's a key word here in that word you use, the sadness. I want to focus in on the sadness. Now use this time. One of the ways that you can overcome it is by using this time to read more, to do more night prayers. But one of the other things is, you know, after, your, after you break your fast, go to the masjid for the, for the evening prayers. Go to the master for the talk.